hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another Inside the Score video. This is a Inside the Score video on a new piece I've written called Rise. Um, it's been written for the Melbourne Staff Band down there in Australia um, who I've been privileged to write uh, a couple of pieces for over the years and um, I really enjoy writing for the Melbourne Staff Band um, lots of you will know that over the years they've really been quite innovative in their programming and the kind of music that they play and particularly how it's presented so I always enjoy the uh, the prospect of writing something for them because I, I know that if I'm going to try something different they're not necessarily going to be scared of that and um, on the contrary they might even embrace <laughs> embrace it so a different piece of music they have received and as you can see those of you who know what a brass band score looks like this is a very different looking score um, certainly for me and this is a new uh, direction um, that I've gone in to come up with something new for them pretty much the first uh, quarter of the piece is set out uh, as you see on the page and basically every instrument has its own stave let me just see if I can make this a bit bigger so you can see what I mean. So we have the soprano cornet line, solo cornets divided into four separate staves. Rapiano cornet, I've spoken before about why I like to use that. That isn't a Salvation Army standard feature if you like. But uh, in terms of distribution of parts, I like the rep part because it just gives you an even number of four on the front and six on the back. Anyway, that's another video. Uh, seconds are divided and thirds are divided four horns, two barrets, uh, three trombones, uh, the youths are divided, the basses are divided, E flat and B flat, and then the usual percussion lines at the bottom. I appreciate it's a bit small, so we'll just zoom in on different uh, bits uh, as, as we move forward. All right then, so why is it a different kind of a score, and why rise? Um, a different kind of a score, a different kind of a concept for a piece for me, uh, you know, when you're writing a march or hymn setting or something fairly standard you, you know you've got uh, your melody on the solo cornet line and the euphonium sometimes the trombones you've got your harmony on the horns and the baritones and the basses taking the bass line that's basically how you write for a brass band for, for the standard stuff but I, what I wanted to try and achieve in this uh, particularly in this opening quarter of the piece is this idea of sound waves kind of washing in, permeating the, the soundscape, notes entering and then uh, fading out, and um, to have as many different kinds of colours as possible, I felt it, each instrument should have its own line, and that gives an enormous amount of scope for sounds to fade in and fade out separately. Also, um, I've had a uh, conversation with Ken Waterworth, the bandmaster, about you know how you might set up a band for a piece like this and I really feel that it probably works quite well sat in the standard formation but also it does lend itself to a little bit of innovation if, if you wanted to have players stood around the auditorium and I've suggested here on this page how that might work these groups here are the groups that work together uh, in the opening quarter of the piece here at letter C you can see hopefully it's not too small that it reverts more um, closer to the standard brass band scoring at that point. So from C onwards, that's the end of the every player on their own stave. In terms of the title, Rise is basically a command for God's people to rise above the storm. And the music isn't really a narrative, but it definitely draws inspiration from Psalm 46. Now that's a psalm that I have looked at uh, and shared very often um, as a you know as a Salvation Army officer as a minister in the Christian church uh, it's the psalm that says be still and know that I am God it's a great psalm to read you know when the storms of life are coming your way because it instructs us really to um, in the face of whatever's coming at us to not flap not panic not go under not be discouraged but just simply to you know be still and know that God is God and that he ultimately is in control. So it takes as its inspiration or its basis the wonderful contemporary hymn which has uh, become popular in recent years, Hide Me Now, or Still as it's uh, probably called. 
and it begins with this kind of mysterious and immersive atmosphere um, and all of this is attempting to paint a picture of God's infinite power um, and his presence beyond time and space uh, as we know it. So we have these waves of sh uh, sound shifting through the ensemble. Um, they represent the animated, changeable movement of God's spirit. And then the, the soundscape is pierced by the distant cries of the phrase, hide me now, which is me so do, if you know the um, <laughs> so far. These are the notes. And again on trombone and second trombone. So that motive, la la la, is basically the main motive for the piece. Um, if you're really interested in modes, a lot of this piece is written in the Lydian mode, which is the popular mode, you know, with an augmented fourth or diminished fifth, depending on what kind of, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. It's a mode that's used in modern cinema scores quite a lot, uh, and certainly by John Williams, which, as you know by now, uh, is where I draw a lot of my inspiration for when I'm putting pen to paper. So anyway, why don't I l play you the first quarter of the piece uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Here we go, from the beginning. So that's uh, well, probably not quite the first quarter of the piece, but certainly the first minute and a half. Hopefully you get what I mean by the sound waves uh, coming in. You get this motive, la 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 lum, comes in a lot, which is a sort of a play on that theme, la la lum, uh, the miso do uh, motive. So here at B you have the main motive uh, played on uh, solo cornet and echoed on the euphonium, of course. And that motive um, is developed as we go into the Allegro session, uh, section. Sorry, We have these sound waves which layer up on top of each other. Three, well, four layers, really. You've got percussion and, and basses dr with a driving rhythm. And then you've got uh, euphoniums up to uh, second baritones on the first layer, a second layer through the middle band, and then uh, the, the, the upper cornets on the top layer, if you like. And that all, all builds, and the, the the drive just keeps on going. At, and at E, we've got uh, the same motive again on on the back row cornets and trombones. And that's all, uh, you know, the same motive, but much much brighter. And then we get to F, and it's at F where we have this sort of uh, first triumphant uh, presentation of that miso do uh, motive. Hide me now. I can just get it to start for you. So why don't we go from the start of this uh, Allegro section through to that Hide Me Now and uh, I'll let you see what you think. <laughs>
Okay, so and that really is the end of that uh, little section. So after that rather exultant um, presentation of Hide Me Now, uh, which is then repeated in the lower brass on the trombones. <laughs> The music really fades into, um, you know, a kind of an ethereal, this is a central movement. It's going to lead into uh, the first presentation of uh, Hide Me Now, which is on the solo horn there. So have a listen to these first four bars of uh, introduction. So, you know, the miso do motive is there again, la la la, on the uh, solo cornet, and but you know, given a minor key uh, treatment, it's a little sorrowful uh, in in how it feels. And um, we have the melody uh, picked up then by uh, flugel and solo horn at the chorus, and muted cornets over the top. Um, the texture is provided by the trombones in the first eight bars and then that's replaced by the, the mellow instruments, uh, tuba, euphonium and baritones. And then, um, so it's just one presentation of the melody and then here I, we come back to one of the main motives from the beginning. And here it's a bit ambiguous about what uh, key we would be in, um, you know, tonally it's not clear. That's intentional, by the way. Um, that motif develops a little bit more. It's then picked up by um, E-flat bass. And then that leads us into... Um, a much warmer and uh, fuller setting of, of the song and, and it's the second verse which begins uh, Find Rest My Soul You'll notice the key signature is rather unforgiving here <laughs> This is a dilemma you have when you put a piece of music together You put it into a key that seems to be absolutely right in, in terms of where the, you know, the music that leads into that key the music that came before and also where it's going to go afterwards um, and also, I just loved how this sounded on the piano in E major. Uh, you don't write uh, in F sharp major for your B flat instruments um, because then uh, your E flat instruments would be in uh, eight sharps, which doesn't exist. So you just basically give it the different harmonic spelling of uh, G flat major instead of uh, F sharp. So that's why we're in six flats. An interesting quirk of that is that the bass trombone which is in concert pitch can actually have the E major key um, and in fact that would be much better than writing in F flat which is the correct um, uh, concert equivalent of um, you know G flat for B flat instruments remember G remember B flat instruments are a tone lower so they're written a tone higher so a tone lower than uh, G flat major is F flat but you wouldn't want to write in the bass trombone F flat major it, again it doesn't exist so he he's, he remains in E major and as does uh, the other concert pitch uh, instruments in the band which are the uh, the percussion so they're basically playing um, here the Glock in E major and the Timp playing in E major as well so it's not a nice key for a brass band but if if the Melbourne Staff Band can pull it off it's a wonderfully well it's a different kind of a key that you you don't really hear so. Let's play from um, the horn melody through this movement and see what you think.
okay it really is a fantastic song and you know as i say one that's becoming popular and uh it's been inspirational to me as i've sung it and really helped bring out you know from my heart that desire to uh want to put my total full and total trust in god particularly well at all times but particularly when the storms come along okay so uh, a nice triumphant ending there and really you we, we could have ended the piece <laughs> uh, on these four bars here i guess so um, what else is there remarkable to say about this um well look here is some rhythmic treatment of the tune which um, i hope enables it to maintain its you know long line i do feel that if you're going to take what is essentially a prayer chorus or um you know an uplifting worship tune that that is that is slow and you're going to give it a rhythmic treatment then you need to preserve um for the integrity of the song i think and the integrity of the melody you need to preserve the line so um it wouldn't be right for me to go ba 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 -da -bum, ba -da -bum, and make the melody rhythmic you need to preserve the original melody but what we can do is introduce some rhythmic accompaniment so let's let's play uh, tubers uh, trombones back row and also the um, tambourine gives this is the rhythmic feature which is the texture if you like and that enables the 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 melody line to preserve uh, its shape this is the rhythm. rhythm. So you see what I mean? Uh, that's a rhythmic texture, but the melody line stays the same. Let's just add the euphoniums in and uh, the percussion as we layer this up. So it's really important that all those uh, semi-quavers or sixteenths uh, dovetail um, on back row cornets, trombones, and with the euphoniums. If you put everybody in at L, uh, just a reminder of what it sounds like with the, with the full band. So that's just something that I've learned over the years that I feel it's really important to preserve the integrity of the line. All right then, okay. So after the big finish then, uh, we're going to the final movement and this is back into uh, an allegro. Uh, it's a segue really, which will um, you know, bring back some of the earlier material in the beginning of the piece. Well, we come to this section R, which when you hear it, it's really, really difficult to play. But I had this music in my mind um, that was, you know, perhaps to symbolise, you know, the tempestuous circumstances that, you know, we're occasionally confronted with as human beings. You know, what does the storm look like? What does it sound like in music? So this is my take on, you know, the storm. Um, it's also uh, an opportunity for the Melbourne Staff Band players to really flex their uh, technical muscles as well. And um, if it can come together with a lot of bite and a lot of energy, um, it could be, you know, menacing as it should be, but also quite exciting uh, to listen to. Um, after that menacing section, um, if we can call it that, at T, we have a, a jubilant presentation again of the main theme from earlier on in the piece. Um, with a lot of energy. At you, we're back into the sound waves washing over us. You know that's that's representing uh, God's spirit uh, in the world, and this time um, it leads into the, the main song again, uh, "Hide Me Now," and um, it's quite a challenge to bring the melody out of this chord, which is the kind of chord you would hear if you sat on your piano keys. <laughs> So where we ended up tonally is in concert A flat and um, the melodies picked up these two bars if I can get them selected so you can hear. La 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 and then we're back into 
Hide Me Now again, a much more jubilant, uh, triumphant presentation. In the upper and middle band, it's all fairly standard, but I wanted these interjections here. The storm is still trying to break in, and this sounds a little bit dissonant compared to the, you know, the A flat major key we're playing in. But it's just a reminder that, you know, we're we're singing triumphantly to God. I am going to put my trust in you. I am going to rise above the storm. But you know, the storms are still knocking at the door. So um, I'm going to let you hear that in a minute. Uh, but look at, listen out for that. Look out for that when it comes along. Um, another triumphant uh, presentation of that main motif from the beginning. All right, let's listen up to that point. Okay, so that's a tune um, presented in a in a jubilant and triumphant way. Um, you'll have heard the interjections here on uh, E flat bass and euphonium with the trombones. That'll have a lot of bite and a lot of intensity. Um, and then here's a classic example for those of you who are interested in, you know, pyramid features. Um, if you sat at the piano, this semiquaver run, you could use, you know, start with both hands down the left hand side of the keyboard, working all the way up to the right hand side of the keyboard um, and it's an interesting challenge to do something like that in a brass band but you know you, the instruments within a brass band do have a sufficient range um, to be able to do that effectively let's see if we can just give this uh, I highlight the semiquaver people to hear how that actually sounds on its own chord four here for the main motive la da, la da, 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 da. Uh, that kind of range that's super intense uh, first trombones also have it at that range as well and um, that with the, with the rest of the band fading away uh, you know like organ chords uh, fading away and then coming back in again that will really uh, sound bright and true great stuff so then we come to what is basically the finale and in the finale, I think what you should do with a, a piece of this kind of scale, and this isn't a major, major, major work, but it has enough substance in it, I think, 
that uh, you know by the time you get to the end eight or nine minutes later you might not remember quite so much everything that has been uh, presented uh, throughout those minutes so I think it's nice to wrap up motives that have gone before in the finale we want it to end triumphantly that I'd already made up my mind about that so uh, that's where we're heading we're heading for a big ending and a triumphant ending because Ultimately, we're talking about putting our trust in God who never fails us. He is a God who can overcome all things. End of story. It doesn't end in a, in a defeat. It ends in a victory uh, for those that, you know, that will believe in God and put their faith and trust in him. So uh, where do we get to? Yes, we're at the finale. So I'm going to play it to the end. And then if there's anything to talk about, we can do that. And so we're hearing a lot of um, miso dough. And then on the soprano, that really needs to come through there. Um, so big, big, big climax. And then I just wanted a final contemplative motive um, before we, we get to the end. And, um, you know, we could have ended all guns blazing just there. But I just wanted to, I just felt that was the right thing to do, to have a final contemplative motive. So section Z opens with this G major, uh, G flat major chord. And um, it, it layers up, layers up Lydian mode stuff going on. Here's the augmented fourth again, uh, second horn, second trombone, first euphonium. Um, Lydian mode all the way to the end. And then a final G flat major chord. Here's what it sounds like. So that's how it ends. You know, it ends victoriously because despite the thunder, um, despite the storms, human beings can trust God and they do trust God and they are able to rise above the storm. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that and um, I'll get a video up at some point in the future. Hope you enjoyed that inside the score. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them below. Um, please do like this video because that really helps it. Uh, get around the world of YouTube and if you can subscribe to the channel even better as well. Thanks. Thanks for listening and God bless.